Why do Catholics go to Mass on Sundays? Uh, not really conducive to a short answer because going to Mass on Sunday is the center of our lives as Catholic people, but I'll see what I can do to give a clear and concise and short answer. To begin with, um, going to Mass on Sunday is a basic obligation uh, for Catholics. From the very, very beginning of the history of the Church, the apostles and their followers gathered on the day of the Lord to break bread and to celebrate the resurrection of Christ on the day that Christ rose from the dead. You read that in the Acts of the Apostles. It's spoken of by the fathers of the church. It was a basic practice in the early church. So one really can't say they are Christian if they do not go to Mass on Sunday. And over time, that developed into what is now known as the first precept of the church. The precepts of the church are a series of five basic practices that all Catholics do that constitute a minimum of practicing the faith. And the first of those five precepts are the Catholic attends Mass on Sunday and Holy Days of Obligation. So it is central to everything we are as Catholic people. Our whole lives flows towards the celebration of the Eucharist on Sunday and flows from it into our everyday lives. The second is, it's a basic command of God. We do it in imitation of God who created us, as the story goes, in six days and on the seventh day rested. And so in imitation of God, we rest from our labors on the seventh day. But one also has to remember who God gave that command to and when he gave it. Keep holy the Sabbath is one of the Ten Commandments. And when did God give the Hebrew people the Ten Commandments? It was right after he had freed them from their slavery in Egypt. In Egypt, the people were defined by their submission to Pharaoh and their servile work that they did as his slaves. But God had just freed them from that. They were no longer slaves. They were no longer defined by their slavery. They were free. And as a free people, they were no longer defined by work. Sure, they worked for themselves. They worked to build up the family, to build up the community, to earn a living. But they were no longer defined by work, but rather by their freedom. And so God commanded them, take a day of rest. Remember, you are free and you are no longer controlled by your work. You are no longer defined by your work. You're defined by your freedom. And so God gave them that day of rest. And not only a day of rest for them, but he commanded them, you are to take a day of rest, your slaves are to take a day of rest. So even the slaves of the Hebrew people themselves are raised to a higher dignity than the Hebrews were when they were slaves in Egypt. So the people, their slaves and their servants, any foreigners among them are to take a day of rest. So this is a command for everybody, not just the Hebrew people. And it doesn't end there. Their beasts of burden are to take a day of rest as well. So you could say God was one of the earliest animal rights activists, that even beasts of burden are raised to a certain dignity by being included in that command to keep holy the Sabbath day and take a day of rest. Six days you may work, but on the seventh day you must rest. You, your servants and slaves, any foreigner among you, and your beasts of burden. As Catholics, we've adjusted it a little bit. It's no longer for us keep holy the Sabbath day, but rather keep holy the Lord's day, the day in which Jesus rose from the dead. But we too are not defined by our work, by our busy, busy schedules, by our careers. Even if one is wealthy, one can be enslaved by the drive to make more money. But God continues to give us that command to lift us up above our servitude above our work to remind us that we have a freedom in Jesus Christ now. And so we too take a day of rest, not on the Sabbath day, which is Saturday, but on the day of the Lord, which is Sunday. It's a day in which we do not engage in our regular work, but we take a day to build up the family, to build up the community, whether it be the local community and especially the community of faith that is the church, our parishes, because in the midst of that day of rest, we take a little time to give worship to God, about an hour each Sunday or Saturday evening, give or take, that we take that time of rest to celebrate our freedom in Christ and give a little time over to God who gives us how many days during the week and only asks us for a little bit of that time to give worship to him in the context of a general day of rest. Now, I'm also aware that some denominations of Christianity or some Christian groups would say that we as Catholics or other Christian denominations take what is called a false Sabbath, because after all, 
God said, keep holy the Sabbath day, which is the seventh day of the week. And the Jews took the Sabbath day of rest, the Saturday day of rest. Christians take the Sunday as a day of rest. And it's not so much a false Sabbath, but one has to understand it in the whole context of salvation history. When God made his covenant with the Hebrew people as creator and as liberator, they take a day of rest in an imitation of God's Sabbath day of rest. After six days of creation, God rested on the seventh. As Christians, we not only remember the Sabbath, but we celebrate the day of the Lord, which is the day that comes after the Sabbath. So when we look at the whole metaphor of the seven-day week, we could say that God created us in six days, God rested on the seventh, and then redeemed us on the eighth. And it is on that day after the Sabbath that Jesus rose from the dead and is our weekly holy day as Catholic people in which we celebrate our freedom in Christ who gave us freedom from death in his resurrection from the dead. One of the ways in which it's described is God rested on the seventh, redeemed us on the eighth day. And so we don't keep holy the seventh day. We keep holy the day of the Lord, which is the day after the seventh day, which is the eighth day and is in fact the first day. The first day of the week, which is Sunday, and the first day, which is the most important of days, the day that Jesus rose from the dead, in which he fulfilled the law that God had given to the Hebrew people, in which he fulfilled the prophets who preached to the Hebrew people, in which he brought all creation to its fulfillment by his resurrection and his triumph over sin and death. And so we celebrate our day of rest, not on the Sabbath day, the seventh day, but on the day Jesus rose from the dead, which we appropriately refer to as the day of the Lord, in which we celebrate with each celebration of the mass, the resurrection of Christ from the dead. And so on Sunday, we as Christians gather to break bread, celebrate Christ's triumph in the resurrection, in the celebration of the mass.